Hello, my fellow parasites. Parasites, apologize! No. Anyway, welcome to Season 4 of the Venom Vlog. This season we'll be covering Venom 2 movie news, more classic Venom and Carnage stories, the Spider-Man Maximum Venom animated series, and all comics involving Eugene Flash Thompson. So sit back and enjoy another exciting episode of The Venom Vlog. I'm Tom Hardy and you're watching The Venom Vlog. Oh, man. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Venom Vlog. And today, this is an episode that I've been kind of putting off for a while now um, because it's a hard topic for me to talk about. So I wanted to make sure I was completely composed and I talked about some fun things before recording this, like uh, the cartoon series, the upcoming Maximum Venom stuff. Uh, but now I want to talk about uh, something that uh, kind of hits home to me a little bit, um, which is the passing of Tom Lyle, who was a comic book artist that I grew up reading um, his artwork, and I grew, you know, staring at his artwork, basically. Uh, one of the people who, him and Mike Warwingo, who also passed away, and Mark Bagley, and all these other tremendous people who worked in comic books and worked on Spider-Man, actually got me into putting pencil to paper and try to draw like them. Um, Tom, eventually after doing comics, became a teacher and did try to teach the next generation of visual storytellers. And uh, and from what I hear, he was a fantastic teacher. And I've known people who have taken classes from him and, and learned from him and who now work in the comic book industry. So his legacy will always live on. And, uh, you know, hearing about his passing was really hard for me because he passed away from a brain aneurysm rupture, uh, which is something I had 10 years ago. Um, I've had others since then that have gotten coiled and prevented from being ruptured, but um, I spent you know, a whole lot of time recovering, like almost a year uh, recovering and trying to get back to you know who I was because I have you know, memory gaps and I have a lot of other problems, but some of the stuff I go through is very little compared to other people I've met in aneurysm groups and um, who I've talked to who you know can't move like the left or right side of their bodies or, or are nonverbal now or go through different things. And so as someone who's been able to kind of bounce back in a lot of ways, that's why I haven't really taken any disability. I wanted to work and actually earn money um, because I know there are people out there who have it worse than me. I try to get back to a, you know, a normal life the best I can. And I've had a lot of struggles along the way, um, but like I said, not nearly compared to what other people have. And what Tom went through, I know how scary that can be, especially for friends and family. So when I first saw the news that he had an aneurysm and that he was in the hospital, I got worried, but I was like, well, they got him to the hospital quick. Hopefully things can work out from there. And then they had to put him in a medically induced coma. And from what I understand, that's or that was the last update I got. And then I heard he passed. Um, so it's heartbreaking. Uh, the guy was an amazing talent. Uh, he was, an, like I said, an amazing teacher. Um, he left a real legacy behind and not just with the artwork. Like I first was introduced to him, uh, his art in Robin. Uh, he drew the first solo Robin comic ever, which was like in the 90s, like, like late 80s, early 90s, somewhere around there. And it was Tim Drake. And he had just become Robin after the death of Jason Todd. And they decided to do the first ever Robin book. And uh, and he went on to working on that book. He did a sequel because it was so successful. Um, he did a, a third one after that. Um, that kind of brought in the Huntress, I think. Um, or one of them had the Huntress in it. And, uh, and it he really made me love Tim Drake as a character because I liked Jason Todd. I grew up with Jason Todd. So I was like, oh, am I going to learn to love a new Robin already? But through Tom's pencils uh, and through that story, I was like, Tim Drake is awesome. Uh, and he also created Stephanie Brown. He was a co-creator of that character as well, who later on became a favorite of mine as well when she became the new Batgirl right before the New 52. So again, his legacy is always here. So I wanted to talk about a couple things. And the reason why I'm making this episode now is because, um, you know, I'm moving, I'm moving to Florida because of aneurysms, because of my health. Um, I won't be able to work for a while. Uh, things have been getting tougher for me. I'm able to click on these videos and record for like an hour. And then after that, I sleep for a long time. Fatigue has really uh, gotten to me lately. Um, you know, the, this past procedure that I've had has, has taken a lot out of me and I'm getting older. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been a, a bumpy road, but I'm grateful every day because obviously I know the alternative is something uh, way more tragic. And uh, so, so Tom, I wanted to honor today and I was given, getting rid of all these comic books. Like I, you know, moving, I can't fit everything because I'm getting a small U-Haul to just hook onto my car. So I can't bring much with me to Florida. And I was um, like, oh, I got to get rid of some stuff. So I reached out to Ryan at Golden Apple Comics and I said, hey, would you, if I just donate the stuff or give it to you, would you give it a good home? And he goes, well, I want to give you something for it. And I said, well, let me check your eBay store and see what's there. So I went through his eBay store 
and I came across Venom Funeral Pyre, um, which is a three issue miniseries that Tom drew. And uh, still to this day, one of my favorite renditions of Venom. I love that he had Punisher team up with him. And these books are also signed by Tom. I never had the opportunity to meet him before he passed. Uh, I've always wanted to meet him, try to visit him at his school, you know, if I could, you know, without being like a creepy fan or anything, I was going to reach out to him first. Um, but I wanted him to know the impact he had on me. And little did I know we were going to share a, a very scary fate uh, and you were, where the coin flipped on different ends for both of us. Uh, where, where, you know, it's, it's hard. Every time I see someone die of a brain aneurysm, it's hard because you, I don't know, you regret, I don't know. Like, um, you kind of wonder like, why that, why them, why were they taken and not me? Like he, he contributed so much to the art world. Like I just work at a retail store. I can't even work at a retail store anymore. I'm just going to sit here and, you know, and, and move to Florida and, and maybe make some YouTube videos. But like, you know, I love doing these, but like, what am I really contributing when you, and you look at what he's done and you're kind of like, ah, it's not fair. Um, so I never got to meet him. So uh, when I went to the store, I saw these on Ryan's, you know, eBay list. And I said, I'll trade you the comics for these if you think it's a good value. And he said, for the Venom vlog and considering how Tom passed away, absolutely you should be the owners of these books. Uh, you should be the owner. So I have issues one, two, great cover there, and three. Um, and we have talked about this. I know some people look back in my episodes. I just made a playlist and I'm gonna, every time we review a, a Venom comic, I'm going to add it to the playlist. Anything with the suit, the symbiote, anything. I made a separate playlist that just goes through the history of the character and I'm trying to put them as close to chronological order as it makes sense to put them in. Um, so I did cover this book. We did discuss it already so I won't do that in this episode. Um, but just to give you a brief summary and if you want to see the episode, it's I'll put a link to it down below. The episode is called The Enemy Within and it's because that trade paperback featured a mini series called The Enemy Within, another mini series called The Madness, and then this was the third mini series in their funeral pyre. So I kind of covered all of them in one episode. So if you're going through the history and you're like, wait, where's Madness? Where's Funeral Pyre? It's in the Enemy Within episode, and I'll try to rename it and call it Enemy Within, Funeral Pyre, and Madness. I'll, I'll try to rename it for you guys. Um, but uh, but so I, I don't want to retread on we've already talked in depth about the story and I talked about Tom's impact on me and, and how much I love his stuff. But just to recap, you know, this is a great series that you can find it in a trade paperback called the enemy within. And it's about venom in, you know, he goes to Oakland right outside of San Francisco. And there's a kid named gray Russell, who is a, a journalist who found out his dad was working for Hydra. And then his dad went missing. So he wanted to go investigate the lab to see if he can learn about his father and what was going on. But some local gang took over the lab just to use it as like a, a place where they peddle drugs and stuff. And so he had to go undercover as a gang member to get in. Uh, but when he does, he gets in over his head and, a, and a, a young or a guy and his son are attacked and the guy dies. And uh, so Gray grabs the son, gives him a note and says, hey, look, I heard about this guy named Venom who lives in this underground city over in San Francisco. Go find him. And tell him I'm in trouble and tell him to get here as soon as possible because I don't want any more people to die. And Venom unfortunately shows up too late because the Punisher gets involved and they kind of get in each other's way. And then in the process, Gray ends up in a machine that his dad created to help Hydra make super soldiers. And he gets superpowers where he can shoot like these hardcore heated energy blasts that can hurt Venom. But also, uh, you know, start to drive him a little insane and, and make him lose his humanity. Um, so it's it's a really fun storyline. I really dug it. And I like seeing Ven Venom and Punisher team up because even though they're both antiheroes, there there is a, a slight extreme to Frank Castle that Venom doesn't have and, and vice versa in different ways. So it's kind of cool to see that kind of fleshed out here and to see Tom Lyle team up with Howard Mackey again, who, you know, I love when those two pair together. Um but uh, yeah, this is a great series. So I already talked about it. I, you know, I'll, I'll you know, put a link down below if you want to go watch that episode. But I thought for this one, even though it's not a Venom-focused story at all, Venom's not in it at all, um, it, it, it did come out before Funeral Pyre, uh, I think. Or maybe they came out around the same time, actually. No, this, the Funeral Pyre came out first. Um, but this is called Beware the Rage of a Desperate Man. And it was one of my favorite Spider-Man stories when I was a kid. Um, because Tom drew it, obviously. Uh, but also with this first issue here, um, I think it was bagged, and or maybe it was this issue. Maybe it was the final issue. One of them was bagged and like sealed. 
with a uh, uh, like an animation cell from the upcoming Spider-Man cartoon. So they were definitely promoting the new Spider-Man cartoon in the 90s, you know, with these comic books. Um, and I always loved that. And there was like, it came with like a little booklet that had sketches in it and interviews with some of the actors. And it kind of got you pumped for a Spider-Man cartoon. It was a really good advertising technique. Um, I wish they would do stuff like that nowadays uh, with stuff other than just putting an ad in a book, but actually, you know, releasing a little animated cell. I mean, how cool is that? It's, it's pretty neat. Um, so that, that had an impact on me. This was also one of my first introductions to the Hobgoblin uh, and uh, the Dima Goblin I had already kind of knew of because of, uh, I think, because I, I went back and reread old classic Spider-Man stories, but there was a time where I wasn't allowed to read Spider-Man. For the guys who who'd never heard that story, um, my mom, the first comic book she got, one of, one of the first comics, because she got me a pile of them, in it was a comic book called Craven's Last Hunt. Um, and the guy at the comic store was like, oh, if, you're, if your son likes Spider-Man or he might like Spider-Man, check out. You know, he's got to check this out. Um, and so, <laughs> so I don't know how old that guy thought I was, but I was like seven. So when I read the book and it had a, a suicide at the end with Craven the Hunter uh, killing himself after defeating Spider-Man, um, it, it, it was, wow, it was powerful. And especially on me, I was like, wow, that's intense. Especially when I lived in a home where I had my father who was abusive and, you know, he was he had he wielded a gun too and uh it was it was scary it was if like the, there was parts of that story that shook me and my mom was like you know what i'm not gonna let you read spider-man anymore for a while so it wasn't until after carnage appeared that i was able to get back into to spider-man and so at that point hobgoblin hadn't really showed up but Dima goblin had he showed up in maximum carnage uh so he's a big part of this storyline and this takes place after the enemy within storyline the venom story we just mentioned earlier where it's venom and morbius teaming up against Dima goblin uh, this takes place after that. And this is the story where Dima Goblin dies. So if you read Absolute Carnage recently, um, that you know that they had to resurrect a new Dima Goblin, but they resurrected and bonded it the, the spirit with um, Shriek and made her Dima Goblin. So again, uh, Tom Lyle's uh, you know um, legacy still living on. Things he drew years ago still impacting stories today. And, uh, and that's amazing like that's how amazing that guy was um and uh and him and howard mackey's work together was so in this storyline this introduces you to uh speaking of craven's last hunt kind of fortuitous that i would get back into comics around this time because uh i stopped reading spider-man because of craven's last hunt this introduces craven's son and it's about hobgoblin uh finding the journal of craven and following it to go look and find ways to enhance himself the way Craven kind of enhanced his abilities as well. Um, and that leads him across many paths. Uh, a new character named Coldheart gets involved. Um, obviously, Dima Goblin, who, uh, you know, Dima Goblin wants to kind of, uh, is dying essentially, and is like, you know, my spirit as this demon is linked to Hobgoblin, um, but not in the way where we join the bodies like Dima Goblin did in the Absolute Carnage, but just like our spirits are tethered together. So in order for me to really follow the path of the righteousness, I need to undo the evil I've done. And the best way to do it is to destroy Philip Mackendale, who is, you know, the Hobgoblin, this version of the Hobgoblin. I got to destroy him. And, uh, and then when he dies, I can finally rest. Uh, so of course, Philip Mackendale, AKA Hobgoblin does not like that plan. He doesn't want to die. So he fights back and the two get into a really bloody battle. And the artwork is just insane. Like, you know, Tom has always done really great panel layouts, really great battles. Uh, he was the one who drew the issue where Scarlet Spider uh, beat Venom almost to death with his fists and then shoots the webbing inside of Venom, separates the symbiote, uh, shoots nails into Eddie Brock's face and then just pummels him to, to knock him out. Um, he drew that issue and it's so good. And he's done things where like Venom would grab somebody, put their you know neck up against the wall, like hold him by the neck and put him against the wall. And then the, then from his wrist, two strands of symbiote would go up in their brain and like, you know, lobotomize them. Like he's done some crazy cool stuff uh, in the, in the storyline and it, with his artwork. And I've always loved it. I've always found his, his energy on the page to be really amazing and captivating. Um, I always found his storytelling techniques to be really, really spot on. And uh, I, yeah, I can't, rave enough about the guy he made such an impact on me like i said ham bagley um waringo uh you know so many artists out there uh, some of whom are no longer with us and uh, and it's it's tragic because these guys were amazing guys and girls who worked in the industry who are past now uh just amazing stuff um so beware the rage of the desperate man sadly i don't think this is reprinted anywhere so if anyone at marvel is like watching this i mean i know it's it might seem in bad taste to do something in Tom's memory um, with like, oh, let's reprint some of his artwork and, and make money off it. I get that. Um, 
but people do need to see this artwork at the same time. Like they, they really need to see this story. Um, it's, it's really great. And you can collect a lot of his Spider-Man stuff together and do a really good Spider-Man trade paperback. And if you really don't want to, you know, make money off it, if you want to do something for charity, uh, I urge all of you to do this. It's something I try to do every year too, which is try to donate to the Brain Aneurysm Foundation or the Joe Necro Foundation. Um, there's a lot of aneurysm groups out there that are trying to raise money. They go to Capitol Hill. They try to plead with, you know, uh, Congress and people to uh, to have someone pay attention. Uh, the, the increase of deaths every year with aneurysms, one in 50 people now can have them. Um, and it's not even just hereditary anymore. It's, it's, it's scary to know that you can just walk one day, complain about a headache, and then just drop dead um with with seemingly no rhyme or reason people will be like what happened to you um i've had friends now who uh you know we did a book for a charity called soul star um we try to raise money for the brain aneurysm foundation and my friend who worked on that book with me gene he ended up like suffering from a brain aneurysm uh, luckily it didn't rupture they were able to get to it in time but even still he's having problems like you know and he and he'll ask me sometimes he's like yeah how do you do it how do you motivate yourself to get through the day and i'm like i you know I can't anymore. Like it, it's hard. It's like, uh, I've done it for 10 years now and it's, it's taken its toll, man. Um, and so then, but there's still, the reason I did it is because I know there are people who had it worse. There are people who can't speak up and say, donate to the brain and nervous foundation. So that's why I took it upon myself to try to do that. And so I urge you guys and I urge Marvel, if you do make a book, you know, um, you know, put some of the stuff in there and, uh, and maybe, donate some of it to the brain aneurysm foundation uh, in tom's name that would be that would be awesome um so the storyline like i said it's it's basically the end of the hobgoblin or the the demo goblin and so spider-man is trying to you know stop hobgoblin and he's trying to stop demo goblin from wanting to kill him but uh he's unable to and in the end uh demo goblin does make a heroic sacrifice uh saves a, a child and in in the process it, it uses the last of his strength and does die so in this issue here uh, the third part of Beware the Rage of a Desperate Man, Spider-Man does witness the death of Demo Goblin. And, uh, and Hobgoblin does escape. And once he does, Spider-Man's about to leave and a priest grabs him. He says, hey, I saw what that demon did. It saved that boy. You inspired him to do that. You know, you've done some good here today. You should know that. And he goes, but I sense a real rage in you. And he goes, yeah, well, Father, I'm going to use that rage and I'm going to unleash it on Hobgoblin. He goes, so I'm sorry, Father, but, you know, uh, you can't stop me from doing what I, I need to go do now. So Spider-Man is ready. To, he's ready to just unleash and, and maybe even kill Hobgoblin, you know? So luckily he doesn't. Uh, in the end, Cold Heart comes in. Spider-Man saves up, saves another family, saves a, um, a father. And, uh, and that kid begs Cold Heart not to, you know, kill Spider-Man. Uh, so there is a big battle at the end here, but Cold Heart and Hobgoblin do get away where she's continuing to pursue him. And we'll see other stories, you know, later on with Hobgoblin. We won't talk about him probably on the show, uh, but there's still more stuff that because of the events that happened in this later on, you know, and Howard Mackey wrote this. So later on, he gets to rewrite uh, and do more stuff with Hobgoblin. And there's like, I think there's times where Hobgoblin becomes like a cyborg and, you know, something like that. He gets like cybernetic enhancements. Um, but this this book, though, it had an impact on me. And like I said, for various reasons, but like bringing in Craven's son, that was a big thing because I was like, oh, wow, they're going to continue the legacy of Craven. And that's where I last left Spider-Man all those years ago, like, you know, seven years before this came out or whatever. I wasn't allowed to read Spider-Man all that time. And now I'm reading a story where Craven's legacy is continuing. And here we are talking about legacies today with, with Tom's work. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I really got sucked into this. And this also was the beginning of the Clone Saga, because in this you'll see moments where there's like a, you know, the here where you see a guy you know using a phone booth and then you know he's and they're like did you see where he's going and he's like yes yeah, so someone close to him had a heart attack and he's heading back to new york and then you see his hand and it has uh, the same high school ring that peter parker had when he graduated uh so uh, this was introducing the uh, the clone you know ben riley and bringing him back into the timeline so a lot i mean a lot of pivotal stuff in this run here the son of craven who's still a character that ends up existing up until like the brand new day stuff with the gauntlet um and i think eventually he got killed there and, and his sister kind of took over and craven came back from the dead so there was like all these things that tom had a, a hand in and had a you know part in um, still happening in comics to this day you know every time i read a tim drake story i can't help but think uh Oh, I love this, but what if Tim, you know what if Tom Lyle was drawing this right now? That would be amazing. Um, and uh, and I'm saying with Spider-Man, sometimes I'll pick up a Spider-Man book and go, 
man, I, I miss Tom's work on this character. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, I just wanted to share this with you guys. It's like I said, it's been hard because I, it's a topic I, it's hard for me to talk about and I don't want to be sad all the time. And I, I used to go through a part of my life where I would share a lot about my health and now I'm trying to just, I mention it from time to time, but I'm trying to move on. I, I don't want people to pity me. I don't want people to treat me differently. Um, I, I work really hard to look and sound normal. Um, as they say, uh, people all the time like, oh, you look and sound great. And you can ask anybody with a head injury. That's something they hear often. And it's not uh, an easy thing to hear because you know how hard it is to uh, converse with people and talk with people. Doing it here in my room with a camera, it's easier. In person, The you know, it's, it can be overwhelming being around people, people release an energy about them. People, you know, you see people differently. Um, it's why a lot of my, uh, you know, uh, friends that I've made at Lego have been either special needs or on the spectrum in some way, uh, because we we are comfortable around each other. We instantly recognize each other, and it's uh, and that's why I've made so many great friends, um, you know, on the spectrum over the past ten years, uh, more so than people who aren't on the spectrum actually. So uh, it's. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard. It's hard to talk about this stuff. And I'm sorry. I know I'm touching my face. Everyone's like, oh, coronavirus. But I, I washed. I washed my hands. I, I'm, I'm pretty good about washing my hands all the time. Um, this is not a new thing for me. I wash my hands all the time. Uh, it's part of my OCD, I guess. Um, but uh, it's it's been a privilege, in, you know, talking about Tom again in this episode and to share with you some of his artwork and his his life a little bit and and to tell you that he was, from what I understand, from everyone who's told, I've never got to meet the guy. And I've always wanted to, um, but so many people who have and who, who were taught by him and everything have nothing but nice things to say. And, and seeing really close friends of his who knew him really well on Twitter and Instagram uh, reacting to his passing was really heartbreaking because um, as someone who's been in the middle of, of, of that and seeing how aneurysms and what you're going through affects the people around you, seeing it from the inside and, and you know, I, I it's it's hard to watch people suffer and uh and and it's hard to hear about another death to aneurysms uh you know you always hope that uh these groups like aneurysm foundation and uh joe necro foundation you always hope that they get heard and that that that, that there is more funding being used there's more help to help people who have it way worse than me and who could save tom's life in the future it's like we want to do that i mean obviously death is a natural part of life but it's also natural for us to fight it, you know, to fight death and, and to try to be our own in lead of our own destinies, you know, as much as we can. And so it's, it's hard. It's, it's a hard reality to face sometimes, but, um, I'm just rambling now. I'm so sorry. Like, I, I, uh, I wanted to share this stuff with you. I wanted to share this story, the Spider-Man story, at least some of it of what I could, could kind of recollect. Um, I read it a couple months ago and it's not really fresh in my brain, but, um, I wanted to kind of talk about it and, and hope that some of this reaches someone at Marvel so they can reprint it. Um, and uh, and if not, go find it in the back issue bin. I don't know if these are available on Comixology, but if they are, it's uh, Spider-Man um, from the 90s series, uh, the one that Todd McFarlane started. He was like the artist on the first 13 or 14 issues. Um, it's that series. And, uh, and this is issues 46 through 49 of Spider-Man. Beware the Rage of a Desperate Man. What a great title um, as well. Um, so, uh, and then, yeah, pick up Funeral Pyre as well. And if you want to hear my review of it and my discussion of it, I'll put a link to that down in the description box below. But let me know what you think. And if you do have any money that you want to donate to the Aneurysm Foundation or Joe Necro, I will put both those links down below. Um, as far as I know, there's not a, I think there was a fund for Tom, uh, Tom's wife, uh, who, you know, who was, was left here, obviously, like after his passing. And I think there was some help to get her help with medical bills. And I saw people saying like, oh, come on, how... Like they, I, I don't know what she was asking for. It was like twenty or forty thousand. I can't remember what she was asking for, but people were like bent out of shape. I saw a couple because people always get crappy about this. Like I've been, you know, I've been on Harmon Town and I've told my story, and I've seen people have sh you know really crappy reactions. I almost swore there. I'm sorry. Have really crappy reactions to like the stuff I've been through, and um and like oh well, you know why does he need that? Why does he you know it's like like you have no idea. Like just getting coiling could cost anywhere from like forty to fifty thousand dollars just for a coiling process. So all the stuff he had to go through before his passing. Yeah, she she you know she shouldn't be stressing about bills. So if I can find that link, and if it's still up, and if it's still accepting money, I'll put a link to that down below so you can help Tom's wife. Um, but then also Brain Aneurysm Foundation, Joe Necro Foundation, I'll put those links below. And even if you can't donate, every once in a while I'll share them and and spread them around and, and talk to people about it and uh, just be aware. That's, I'm just trying to raise awareness here 
um, because I think when you are aware and, you, and if you see someone who has similar symptoms and they go to the hospital, you can tell them and they have a better chance at saving their life if they know what's happening, you know, beforehand. So, um, so yeah, please just educate yourself on this kind of stuff and uh, on aneurysms in general. And, uh, you know, and I'll try to put a link to some kind of information about that. But uh, most of that you'll find at the Joe Necro and Brain Aneurysm Foundation. They have a lot of great uh, information there that you can read up on as well. So uh, thank you guys. Thanks for, you know, going through this episode with me. I know it was a long one, but um, I really had a lot to say. And I really wanted to pay tribute to a great man uh, and a great artist and someone like, who, like I said, who is still affecting people. Uh, today, like I will always think about Tom, um, and uh, and I will always think about his artwork and what it's meant to me. And even though I don't have a strong visual side to you know my brain anymore, uh, I can't. I have to struggle drawing, but when I do, I think about I think about Tom's work. I think about Michael Ringo. I think about all these amazing artists who have inspired me over the years. And uh, and I I know some of you guys have been asking. I started a carnage drawing a while ago. I also started a venom drawing. I haven't got them done when I get to Florida and I settle in and I can set up a nice studio to draw it all. Um, I will sit down and I will try to finish them in for no other reason to do it for Tom, uh, to show that he, you know, inspired me to push through even my struggles now today to still draw something. And uh, I will try to deliver that to you guys by the summertime for, for sure. Um, so it's on my list and I'll get it done. So uh, let me know what you think of these books down below. Uh, check out my review of Funeral Pyre. Check out the links that I put down there and uh, let me know your thoughts down below. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you all in the future. Peace.